Do you remember the most interesting man in the world campaign? Meet Ryan Thompson. The industry mogul behind that award-winning campaign. He also earned innumerable honors. Including a Golden Effie Award, for five years sustained success for groundbreaking marketing campaigns with brands like Tough Mudder, World of Adventure, and Dos Equis. The first official ESPN beer sponsor of college football playoffs. I am happy to say that the young man you're about to hear who's going to present um, how writing his personal purpose statement changed his life and how did that come about. Ryan Thompson I have known since he's been 10 years old. He lived on Blue, the famous Blueberry Hill. Tell him why it's famous. <laughs> why is he famous? No, why, why is Blueberry Hill famous? Well, it just appeared in the New York Times. <laughs> Uh, as uh, people are escaping New York City and they want to get into the fresh air. And so here's this big ad of this house that's for sale right on the corner of our street on Blueberry Hill. And everybody's sending me, I found my thrill on Blueberry. I don't know how many people have sent that. So I want to introduce Ryan because he's our first presenter that has slides. We've practiced this and we're hope it's going to work. And I don't want to take away from what he's saying, but I want to tell you a little bit about him. Ryan uh, graduated from JMU University. Um, and he, a, a lot of young guys and gals want to get into the city and the excitement of the city. And he went to work for a, an advertising agency, Lolentis. And um, he decided a couple of years into it that that really wasn't matching or aligning with his purpose. So he joined Red Bull um, as a field manager, uh, which was an energy drink that no one, heard, very few people heard of, but it became this powerful little blue can. And um, Ryan took that brand and helped grow it uh, from, um, what did he say here? Um, I think 0.5% to 100%. He then left, he was there eight years, he then left Red Bull and joined Heineken USA where Ryan was responsible for the Dos, Mexican brand Dos Equis. And he, Ryan was responsible for managing the account that we all saw the commercials with the most interesting man in the world, stay thirsty my friend. And Ryan grew that brand very successfully and of course management now wants to say we want to, you guys are doing such a great job. We think we want to tinker with it. Tinkering with it kind of wasn't quite what maybe Heineken should have done. But Heineken did have a management change. And um, they held this event and Heineken hired this firm to help Heineken come up with its corporate purpose statement. And then they took its manager managers to the West Point Academy so that they could get the, all the people to buy into the brand and the new direction it was going, but they all had to come up with their own personal purpose statement. And I'm going to turn this over to Ryan and his slides. And hopefully when, he, when we click on this, everything works. And the Antons that have been checking in here um, we'll be able to enjoy hearing from Ryan Thompson. So Ryan, take it away and play your slides and tell your story and inspire these wonderful folks. Thank you for that great introduction. I really appreciate it. Ryan, you need to turn up your volume. That would be helpful. Can you know, you hear me? Your Can you hear me? It's, just, it's not loud enough or? No, you are. No, you are. Okay, I'll, I'll, try, I'll try to amplify a little bit here. Is that better? That's yeah. great. All right, great. Well, thank you again, Vicki, for the warm introduction. I couldn't be happier to be here. And Joyce, thank you for all your support and, um, and administrative support and getting this going and, and everything that you guys have been doing to help bring purpose uh, to everyone uh, on this call and, and well beyond. It's such an important topic. And as Vicki introduced, uh, I have a, a long history and, and it's certainly um, purpose is something that's very uh, near and dear to me. So. Um, I couldn't be happier to, to share this with you all today. Um, I'm going to attempt here to uh, hopefully bring up a presentation and uh, fingers crossed everything will go as planned. Uh, you know, it's not 
Um, I, I have to admit, this is the first time that I've, uh, that I've had to do this virtually. And I oftentimes picture myself uh, when I'm up on stage in front of an audience uh, with, with no pants on uh, because it helps, you know, get rid of those nerves. And today I'm fortunate that today I can actually have no, no pants on. So this is really <laughs> So, Your anyway. mom's on, Ryan, so keep it clean. That's right. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. I'll, I'll stay low. Uh, so, yeah, so um, I'm going to try to take you guys through this. And, and again, apologies for any, um, any kind of niches or glitches along the way, but we're going to try, try to do this as best we can. Um, what I'm going to do here today is try to give you all a sense of my background, uh, my experience with purpose and, and purpose statement building. Um, and hopefully to really encourage you all to consider uh, taking the next step in your own purpose statement building experience. Um, we all may have a different sense and understanding of what purpose is and how it, um, what it really means to us, uh, but I wanna give it a little bit more structure from my experience and um, oh, oh, uh, hopefully uh, by the end of this presentation, uh, give you all uh, the, the desire and the enthusiasm and the motivation uh, to take your next step in purpose building as well. Uh, I just got a note from uh, from Jay Donaldson is saying that we should uh, mute um, so that we don't have sound distractions while R Ryan is speaking. Yeah. So if you're if you're not on mute currently, please please do. It'll be a little bit easier. So, and uh, can you guys see this bar here? Let me see if I can get rid of that. Perfect. Come on. Come on. There you go. All right. So um, as Vicky had said, um, you know, just to give you a little bit of my background and the, from a very kind of 40,000 foot viewpoint, I was born in Philadelphia and with my formative years, uh, I up here in Connecticut, uh, K through 12, and I attended James Madison University majoring in intercultural communications um, as part of the speech communications department. And really from uh, a young time really started to develop my passion uh, for all things immersive, um, from anthropology and language to immersive research and even immersive theater. Uh, this was something that was really near and dear to me, is really kind of walking a mile in someone else's moccasin, so to speak. And I went on to advertising in New York City after school. Um, I had the opportunity to work with uh, Low Lintos and Partners, a mid-size agency off of Madison Avenue. Um, and um, really, I think, you know, that was where both my understanding of the business world as well as my continued passion for travel and for different cultures continued. Um, but as I did that in my, my young to mid middle 20s, um, I recognized that I was really looking for something more out of life. And so I took an opportunity to uh, move into something new. Um, I uh, went to work, uh, took a little bit of a chance at the time, went to work for this new energy tonic that had just come into the US. Uh, it was something called Red Bull Energy Drink. Uh, and it, was, I, it brought me back to the city of brotherly love. Uh, this is also, you know, for me, convenient because uh, it was also where my girlfriend was, uh, now wife, was attending grad school. Um, so it was, it was great from a work and, and a uh, personal perspective. And my goal in the tri-state area was to uh, really introduce that world of New Jersey, uh, New Jersey, um, uh, Pennsylvania, Delaware, uh, et cetera, to the world of Red Bull, um, to drive unprecedented sales uh, and, and or sorry, record sales growth and, and unprecedented trial and, and awareness. Um, and, and as Vicky had said, you know, boy, boy did we over deliver on that brand. And uh, as they say, the, the rest is history. Um, moving on from there, um, as Vicky alluded to also, um, I followed uh, the completion of, of some, some graduate study at Warden um, and recognized that I was craving something more, something bigger. I think at the time I wrote, I wanted to operate big or heavy machinery. And so I went to work for Heineken USA on this tiny little fledgling Mexican beer brand uh, that had just enormous ambition. Uh, it was the Dos Equis uh, beer brand, and, and uh, while the most interesting man in the world inspired people to live more interesting lives, my role primarily was to facilitate interesting experiences for our target consumers. And uh, boy, do we, do we do that in spades. Um, not only that, but it was also, um, you know, to really, in, in, in evolve the brand and bring it to the next level. Uh, my, my goal really was to be the curator of content 
uh, the provocateur of Provence and, and the man behind the most interesting man, although I think that may have been misquoted once or twice. Um, but basically, I became the chief guinea pig. And so, uh, and so ultimately, with that, um, we began this journey um, as an interagency team, igniting this creative genius. Uh, and it brought us to some pretty wild places. Um, we really felt that it was important to inspire the team that, that made the magic and delivering uh, experiences to them along the way so that they could better do it for consumers and ultimately that they could also create the most interesting man's countless television commercial antics along the way. This, uh, this started to uh, really uh, be this magic really started to, and, and what we were doing with our interact, our, uh, sorry, interagency brand team uh, really started to uh, wear on some of the other folks in the Heineken USA marketing department. Um, we became the envy of the whole department, in fact, and the magic started rubbing off on them. Um, the whole team started going on off-sites for team building more often, uh, breaking down barriers and in interdepartmental silos, and disarming and inspiring everyone along the way. So this was really something special, something that sparked well beyond the most interesting man himself and that campaign, but within Heineken, that big green gorilla uh, name on the door along the way. And it was around that time, circa 2014, that Heineken USA was on a mission uh, under the leadership of then US CEO, Dolph Vandenbrink, who now just was announced as the global chairman and president of Heineken Global in the Netherlands after a stint in Mexico and a stint in Asia Pacific. And under his leadership and tutelage, um, he felt that in order for the company to really thrive, it needed to establish its purpose. It needed to establish its reason to be its authentic self to consumers and its internal drive to effectively move employees forward in unison uh, to achieve great results. And so with the help of Nick Craig, the co-author of Finding Your True North and the founder of the Authentic Leadership Institute, um, Heineken senior leadership embarked on this purpose uh, mission and journey and finding not just the purpose for themselves, but, but first and foremost, the purpose for the uh, company itself. And so we established this, this purpose statement as we brew experiences that inspire legendary lives. So we brew experiences that inspire legendary lives. And to gain full buy-in from the whole company, um, all the leaders agreed at Heineken USA that that, excuse me, uh, that all the leaders, all from, the, from the, the lowest levels to the highest, must go through the same process uh, and first establish their own individual purpose. And in so doing, better understand what the purpose of the organization was all about. And so we headed off to, an, uh, to another offsite, this time at West Point Military Academy. And from that point forward, the results were simply extraordinary. Excuse me. Um, the two-day offsite was an emotionally grueling set of seminars, workshops, and breakouts. And what emerged was uh, with this clear understanding of purpose, and more importantly, what life is like without a lighthouse on the horizon, what life is like without a rudder on your sailboat, or what life would be like without your true north. And when we think about that, we often think about the idea that life without a purpose, without a clear purpose, a well-defined purpose statement, can feel like you're drifting, can feel like you're tacking more than going forward, and can feel like life is a frenetic pace and a frenetic balance of good and bad, highs and lows, that really don't seem to have any sense or, or reason um, to, to be able to draw a conclusion to, or to be able to continue to move forward with upper trajectory. We lose confidence, um, more predictable behavior uh, and responses are, are lost, and we lose control or, super, or simply put, lose that lack of our rudder on life. And when we think about that, you know, what are, what's the opposite of losing your rudder and losing control? On the flip side, or the other hand, life could also plateau. You think of yourself reaching the top, your best self or your best life, but is that sustainable long term? How do you drive, sat drive satisfaction when there are no ups and downs at all? And so what sometimes we feel or that we think is, you know what, I've got my purpose. My role was to be a financier and by God, I've done it. 
my job was to be a teacher. I've taught my entire life. I couldn't be happier. Or my job, my role was to serve the public and I want to be, I want to be a fireman and, or I want to be a police officer or I want to be a nurse or something else. But that's defining and that's, and that's stabilizing yourself with a profession or with a, a, a call in life. But it's not necessarily giving yourself a purpose or a dedicated purpose statement to live by and to continue to go through life. And so what we think about here, really, and over the course of the two days workshop, we went through this emotionally arduous process of finding your sweet spot and defining our intrinsic and our extrinsic motivators or motivations. But defining our crucible moments and our peak performances was by far the most significant. And what we think about when we think about peak performances, these are positive experiences such as having a wise mentor or succeeding at a career changing challenge. Perhaps it could also be having a unique or meaningful experience at a young age. But as much as we, as much as we want uh, to have positive experiences like these, you know, transformations for many leaders result from going through a crucible or a crucible moment, the concept of a crucible moment that tests leaders to their limits. And we all have crucible moments. A crucible moment is by definition a transformative experience through which an individual comes to a new or altered sense of identity. These are times when our character is tested. These are times of adversity where great strength is shown. Those who go on to uh, be great or those who take time to pause and reflect on, of, on these moments. This is really the moments that make us leaders uh, that we're going to be, the parent that we're going to be, and the person that we're going to be in the future. A Harvard Business uh, Review article written by the authors of Geeks and Geezers who interviewed more than 40 top leaders in business and the public sector put it this way. We were surprised to find that all of them, young and old, were able to point to intense, often traumatic, always unplanned experiences that had transformed them and had become the sources of their distinct, uh, distinctive leadership abilities. The crucible experience was a, tr a tr trial and a test a point of deep self-reflection that forced them to question who they were and what mattered to them. It required them to examine their values, question their assumptions, hone their judgment, and invariably they emerged from the crucible stronger and more sure of themselves and their purpose, changed in some fundamental way. Passing through a crucible or refraining it years later with the benefit of hindsight is what we did in that workshop and often will, and, and sorry, and not often, but will always help you to see the world differently. And thus you will behave differently as well. Well, we also know that life is chock full of emotive memories, both good and bad. And the emotional spectrum here is a marvelous tool that help us reflect and analyze our memories. Uh, our mind is literally programmed to uh, program for this exact purpose. Uh, what we see here is a wide range of emotions which events can trigger. How an event makes us feel in the limbic system of the brain, and then what we think from the cerebral cortex. The same principle can be applied to the old adage of fight or flight. And when we look at this a little bit more carefully and closely, we think about what we would find in that purposeful life. That is the upward trajectory of a life filled with wins and losses, good times and bad. Moments when we hit our lowest of lows and then rebound to our next highest of highs. When we can't always control the curveballs and free falls life throws us, but we can certainly get up when we fall down. And how we will, sorry, how well we'll do it when we know life has more peak performances in store for us. Well, how we do that helps us to better be able to take the lows in stride, rise in confidence, rudder in hand to fight to the top once again. This often reminds me of a, of a book you just, you just can't put down. Um, it's a gripping paperback novel. It should be. Uh, life, is, life should be a book like that. The Ryan Thompson book uh, or the Vicki Thomas book or the Joyce Cohen book charting our conflict, angst, and, anxiety, and, and adversity against action, achievement, and, unyield, and an unyielding willingness to fight the good fight makes the book of Ryan Thompson or any other a very worthy read. And so I thought 
today, you know, it's probably better for you all not to just take my word for it. And it gave me a great opportunity to go through the exercise of reconnecting with many of the folks that I went through my purpose statement building workshop with many, many moons ago, uh, six years to be exact. And I wanted to reach out to some of these people and understand what they took from their purpose st uh, statement building workshop experience and how it affected their lives today. And so of the seven or eight different people that I interviewed, all of whom you know, uh, really had phenomenal things to say with the workshop and uh, who continue to be inspired and, and lead and, and go through life with confidence, I wanted to just share a few with you. The first one is Tara Rush. Senior Director of Corporate Communications at Heineken USA at the time, and now Chief Communications Officer for Audi North America. A couple of key things that she said to me that I really took to heart was, once you define your personal purpose, it helps you filter your life decisions. It's not a yes or no question, more how, you, uh, how much you feel you are fulfilling it. When your cup isn't full enough, it's time to make decisions, always looking through the lens of purpose. And as a leader, you want to bring your special magic into your role and lean into the, uh, the, the core strengths at the executive table in this case. The more I was able to lean into what I was successful at, the more successful I became. I asked similar questions to Nuno Teles, who at the time was head of marketing for Heineken USA and is now president of the Diageo Beer Company, with his purpose of being to spark positivity around me and embrace the future with humanity. He said, I would, I would feel life li like life is more randomly lived without a purpose statement, like sailing without a lighthouse or a view where I want to land. Purpose is that destination that I want to achieve. He also said, which I found extremely fascinating, that Diageo is not accepting of someone with no clearly defined purpose. He came to Diageo after Heineken and in the few years more, more recently, Diageo as a company has moved to everyone in the company actually having a purpose statement. He said, Diageo is taking purpose to the next level. Everything starts and ends by living your purpose. There is a leadership behavior in the way that you manage your people or you are not taking the team or yourself to the next level. Simply put, it's not a choice, but a prerequisite. And finally, I got a chance to speak with Stacy Tank, whose uh, purpose statement always blows me away, literally. She's now the, home, uh, the head of home, um, home services at Home Depot. She started as the communi chief communication officer at Heineken USA, uh, now literally parlaying her, her expertise as a, a senior executive in, in the com corporate communications world uh, into more of a general, generalist setting where she hopes uh, someday soon to become uh, the next CEO of a big Fortune 500 company. And her purpose is to ignite the worthy fight and blow your hair back. She said, the past eight people in my position got fired. Thinking back to my purpose statement in times of need helped me to turn the business around. Without my purpose statement, I'm not sure I would have so fiercely protected the amount of time I have outside of work, not being as intentional. She said, my purpose statement is clearly, in, uh, as, sorry, created an internal dialogue and checking me me mechanism. Mantras are a powerful thing, and my purpose statement is powerful and guiding. Most of these people reflect on their purpose statement literally every day, and they continue to do that. And it's been extremely successful for them. So what did this mean for me? Where did my peak performance come from? You know, I define my peak performance in an almost poetic way, and I literally look back to my early childhood days on the Jersey Shore in Ocean City, and I found that it, it really almost came out uh, you know, in, in again, a, a very poetic light. And I'll just read you kind of what I wrote at the time in 2014. I said, running out to the sandbar, splashing through perfect little waves, now knee deep, then thigh, then waist. Diving forward at the very last second before a wave comes rolling in, crashing over your head. The ebb and flow of the water, the undulation of the waves, and the slight pull of current taking you down the coastline. I'm the furthest one out when the perfect wave rolls in. I push off the bottom, kick hard with three arm strokes. My arms out straight in front of me, now purling through the water until my tummy again safely touches the sandbar. Repeat. And later in life, I looked at another peak performance, again, drawing a lot of inspiration from the ocean in my early times uh, on the water and, and my continued passion and excitement for, for water and being a waterman. Because surfing in this case is the most humbling yet rewarding endeavor of my life. 
waiting with anticipation for the conditions to be right. The effort of getting to an ocean, and reminder, I lived in Philadelphia and now in Connecticut, so not necessarily known for a big surf. The assessing, assessing the situation of looking out at the water, the physical exertion of getting out there and continuing to try for wave after wave, the rawness and risk associated with harnessing mother nature and the sense of completeness with a wave well ridden. My second crucible moment came from the most difficult times of my life. Well, sorry, moving from peak uh, performances to crucible moments. My first was uh, really the most time, difficult time in my life where the, my two crucible moments were bookended by the loss of my father after a heroic two and a half year battle facing stage four pancreatic cancer. Bookended with the birth of my first son, plagued by the potential complications early on and then born prematurely. And ironically and unexpectedly in the same hospital my father was both born and died in six months later. However, the combination of my two peak performances and my two crucible moments, coupled with the tremendous encouragement and facilitation within our small group breakouts over two difficult workshopping days at West Point Military Academy, brought me to my purpose sta statement and what I continue to live by today. And that is to create waves of extraordinary adventure for those willing to surf to create waves of extraordinary adventure for those willing to surf. The creativity, the power of the unknown, the comp competition of, of those around you, the repetition with short spurts of rest, sometimes long in between, the recognition that waves are not easily harnessed. You won't catch all of them. Not ordinary, but remarkable, unique, one of a kind. The intention of others who desire to participate with a willingness to step out of their comfort zone, the trust they put in me to guide them through what is often the transformative journey and deliver them safely back again with an incredible new perspective. This process gave me the confidence to move on when the time was right. It provided me with a mindset to do it my way, my process. And in this case, after I left Heineken and Dos Equis in March of 2017, it was take, to take time to give myself time to decompress it was to give myself time to reflect. It was to give myself time to seek inspiration, to, to help determine what I wanted to do next and where I wanted to go and who I wanted to work with and, what, and who I wanted to impact. And to go through that recalibration, recalibration process to make sure that I was continuing to tell the story of Ryan Thompson, that gripping novel that you just don't want to put down. And after a period of time that led me to starting my own company, starting my own consulting business, which is to this day peak experiential. Now, with that greater purpose statement in mind, I get to choose what I do and who I do it with. Where I want to work and who I want to work now, more than ever, I'm eager yet satisfied. I'm driven yet sustained, and I'm confident yet content. It's given me an opportunity also to, get a, to give myself a new perspective on what where and why I spend more qualitative time with my family. And ultimately, it's also ensured while I focus on my work and family, I always make time to make a difference beyond what I'm doing with them through volunteering. And in this case, living my purpose with laser-like focus on scouting BSA and beyond sharing the experience with my own children, but delivering it for those of other families has become my sweet spot in my volunteer and, and my uh, nonprofit time. And in doing so, I truly believe that if each and every one of us is to follow our passion and to follow our purpose and to really focus in and to harness that talent and then provide it to others, wouldn't the world be a better place if we all did that? And so with that, I'll wrap it up and I'll ask the question as, parting back to the group and thanking you for my, my time that I've given, uh, been able to share with you today and the story that I've been able to give you. I'll ask you all, where are you on your purpose statement building journey? Back to you, Vicki and Joyce. Thank you. Bravo. Wow. What a great job, Ryan. And mom sitting down there. <laughs> Woo <-hoo! laughs> Woo who we didn't think could ever dial in 
to a, uh, uh, I mean, if Joyce and I are having trouble with technicalities, <laughs> Lynn is kind of like down on the bottom there. So, Lynn, what do you think of your son? Oh boy. There are hardly words. He was absolutely spectacular, amazing, enthusiastic. The, the vocabulary, the, the, the entire presentation was, I was so, I'm so proud. So very, very yeah, proud. And so are we. As always. So are we, yep. Bravo. Yep. All right. oh, hey. yeah. Thanks, thanks, Mom. Leave it there. Just, just put mute, mute, mute. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, Vicki. Yes. Let's take one minute and just go around uh, because several people did come in and I think I've got everyone in the room now. If they just go around and just say their names and where they're from and then let's jump right into questions and comments. All right, let's stop. Where, let, everybody's Anton, so let's start with Jeff Rosenfeld. <laughs> no, I'm really Anton. No, uh, Jeff <laughs> Rosenfeld, I'm based in New York City. Okay, and uh, Barbara. Uh, Barbara Abramowitz, Newton, Massachusetts. Okay. While we're there, go to the other Barbara. Barbara Shaman. Oh, Bar oh, Barbara, you're on mute. Unmute, Barbara. Unmute, everybody. You're, you're on oh. mute. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Where are you from, oh, Barbara? I got kicked out. Um, I'm in Philadelphia, your city of brotherly love, and thank you so much for your very insightful presentation about embracing the future with humanity. That's, that really got to me. Okay, Hojo, who is listed Hi. as Anton. Hey, how you doing? Bob Hojanaki, Fairfield, Connecticut. Okay, and Joe Coolis. Uh, Joe Coolis with the Shed Group in Shelton. And your Anton, partner. who is Paul, your partner. Uh, Paul Mayer. Hi, Paul Mayer uh, from Trumbull, Connecticut. Okay, and I don't know who this next person is, uh -huh. Joyce. Do you, next to Paul, because it says Anton, and I know it's not Anton. I'm Anton, and I'm Marilyn Lawler from Madison, Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> With no picture. Okay, great. Let's go to Dave Stowe. Good afternoon. My name is Dave Stowe. I'm here in Shelton, and uh, thanks a lot, Ryan, for taking the time to uh, really think through where you're at and also uh, sharing those with us here. Very good morning. Thank you. My pleasure, Dave. I'm going to go down to Gary Salomonson. Hi, I'm Gary Salomonson from Two Harbors, Minnesota, on the shores of Lake Superior. And Jay Donaldson. Hi, Jay Donaldson from Avon, Connecticut. And I also want to say thank you, Ryan, for that because I'm in the middle of doing mine and you definitely gave me inspiration to pivot on what I'm doing. So thank you. It was great. Fantastic. That's a really key word. Great to have you, Jay. And Sandy Anton. Sandy Timmerman. Oh. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how Anton got up on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm Sandy Timmerman, uh, Fairfield, Connecticut. Thanks, Ryan. The presentation made me think about how your purpose statement might change as you move into a retirement into new phases and i'd like to pursue that a little bit if we have time good i look Corky forward to it we will corky stewart anton oh, corky stewart corky stewart norwalk connecticut okay and corky will be our june 3rd speaker and he is one of our keynote luncheon speakers should we ever have a conference but we are yet to determine that um that out dawn yeah another anton <laughs> another one dawn sully pile i am in natick massachusetts uh carol tolkien carol tolkien from manhattan new york we did lynn thompson at Orono. and there's and todd. i think that's todd down there right yep hi todd hutchison fairfield connecticut uh ryan very inspirational thank you okay. and the north carolina connection Hi, it's Anita from Durham, North Carolina. Hi, Anita. Good Hi. to see you. Good okay. To see you. Okay, and uh, I see Kevin. Kevin, you're on mute. Kevin Brockmeyer. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, Kevin now. Brockmeyer from Richmond, Virginia. Great job, Ryan. Thanks, Brock. Good to see Sorry, Kevin. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Okay. Wait a minute. We're uh, we're missing a few. 
we just have a lot of Antons. There you are. <laughs> uh, Mark, Fi Mark Fisher from Minneapolis. And wow. he has a fabulous book out. <laughs> Serious mm -hmm. about retiring, and it really, it's, it's a must read. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and down in the, Joyce, you know some of these people um, that, are we, that are Antons. Uh, well, um, well, no, I don't know. Some of you are, well, Tracy, Tracy Flynn, you're, you're, you've called in. Hi, uh, Joyce, I'm here. I switched from the computer to my cell phone, and I don't know why my video isn't up, but I was prepared. Anyways, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Tracy Flynn from Durham, Connecticut. Hello to Durham, North Carolina. And uh, Ryan, your presentation was like flipping on the electricity and just got me charged up. So I really appreciate the insight you shared, and thank you. No, thank you, Tracy. I appreciate that feedback, and uh, sounds like so, sounds like the job was well done then. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and there's another person who called in has Anton Whitting again, and you're on mute. So if you could unmute yourself and tell us who the mystery person is. Okay, there are a couple others, Joyce. There, there's Anita down there, Joyce. We got Anita. Oh, you did. Oh, okay. And I don't know who called in. His name's Anton and is on mute. <laughs> if we guess, can we, do we get a prize? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, who did, we, who did, who did uh, have a chance to introduce themselves and just say who you are and where you're from? Because on my screen, everyone's Anton. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. Well, I, I, I definitely recognize the guy there with the, with the Boston hat on. I'm, I, he's definitely not calling from Boston, though. Jeremy, it's great to see you. I believe he's hey, down this, in Atlanta. This, <laughs> hey. <laughs> this is Jeremy Anda down in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, when I saw the uh, note from Ryan on LinkedIn, I couldn't resist. Uh, used to work with Ryan back in the day. Always found him hugely inspiring, and so glad I was able to uh, call in and, and and take this all in. Great job, Ryan. Awesome. Thanks, Jeremy. Great to see you. <laughs> um, others that have not been identified, please. That we have not had a chance because I'm seeing Anton on my screen and I everywhere. Oh, yeah. yeah, I see yeah, Anton. I everywhere. think we we've heard from everyone except who the mystery person is who's called in. <laughs> you know you can put your real name up there. How do you do that? There's there on the top right there are three dots. Right next to where it says mute. And right next to where it says mute, top right. And it says go down three spaces and it says rename. Rename. Oh. I'm going to try that. I hate to touch anything because I'm afraid I'm going to poof everyone away. So no. I'm going to remain. Am I? Oh, yeah, I'm Anton, too. Um, so let's kind of turn it over to questions. Anybody have questions um, that you might have of Ryan and maybe some issues of your own, where you're at with your own purpose finding? And just a quick reminder, everybody, if you're not speaking, please just put yourself on, on mute. Thank you. So Ryan, this is Anita from North Carolina. My question is, do people find that their purpose statement changes or evolves over time? Because what I would have said even 10 years ago, it might be driving, but it, it would certainly seem to morph as you more become more experienced in your own life. Yeah, Anita, that's a great question. You know, I think that um, and, you know, again, anecdotally speaking with a uh, number of the folks that I'd gone through the purpose statement building workshop with um, over the past few weeks, um, it's, it's seen, if I found that some folks remained, uh, you know, intensely, uh, you know, um, connected to their initial purpose. They, they got it. Uh, they, they're living it. And uh, it's what they need. And again, I think that was really best uh, testimony by um, by Stacy Tank and her idea, um, you know, of um, you know, just kind of like living life uh, fiercely and and blowing your hair back. I think she is. She used the term mantra, and I really think she was kind of you know that cadence and and, and um, you know powerful 
uh, you know, phrasing on a near daily basis it was, was obviously very important to her. Um, on the other hand, um, we, you know, we did speak with folks, uh, Nuno Tellis, Nuno Tellis was one of those who, you know, didn't, didn't change his uh, purpose statement, uh, but did certainly evolve it. Um, I think whether it's by, um, you know, milestone moment in your life or um, career path or opportunity change, um, entering it in a new phase um, and time, I, I think it's absolutely important to think about whether or not those words in your purpose statement do um, continue to resonate with you as strongly and, in, and as intensely um, as they once did when you first put it together. My, my hunch is that at its very core, you know, it's, it's not going to change substantially, but it is very much within your power and you have full permission once it's, once it's created um, to evolve it to meet your needs um, and ensure that you can live a more purpose-driven and purposeful life uh, to, to the very end. You know, that was my question too, I think when I introduced myself as I've moved from a career which was really busy to one that's still busy, but, I'm also in a different phase of life and you look at adult development theory and you change, you should change as you move along. So I was struck by some of the purpose statements that were more universal. Some didn't seem to be more uh, about leadership and working with people and others seem to be a little more inner and uh, I think yours sort of captured a full life spectrum. So I wonder how long it took, here's my question, how long did it take you to work on it? Because it seems to me the more universal you can get with your statement, the better off you're going to be, and that is your core. Absolutely. You know, I would just preface that by saying you're absolutely right. I think, I think we, you know, we often think about retirement and what that means. And, and the definition of retirement, I think, is, has changed dramatically over the past several years. Um, you know, this idea of no more career, uh, this idea of, you know, like, you know, just keeping busy, uh, you know, the idea of, um, you know, pulling out the, the next game of bridge or the next game of, of Scrabble. I, I, people are just not comfortable doing that anymore. Um, it's about keeping your mind occupied and, and, and keeping it uh, energized and keeping it invigorated because that affects your mind and your body and your spirit. So, you know, I think that that's really uh, an important uh, notion. And, and when I talked about on the one slide, this idea of plateauing, um, plateauing is, is kind of the flip of, of a life of, of frenetic pace. And the idea of plateauing is, is, is when you haven't taken the time to truly tr define your purpose statement, but rather think you know what your purpose in life is. Again, my purpose, it might be, I, I've always wanted to be a police officer, or I've always wanted to be a teacher, or um, I just, I've just wanted to be I just wanted to have a family and, and, and be, you know, be married or, or, you know, or have kids. And that's my purpose. That's not a purpose statement. A purpose statement is diving deep, as I explained, and really deriving, extracting out the things that are your internal motivators, the intrinsic and extrinsic motivators that, um, that ensure that you are living a life with enthusiasm, that you are living a life that no matter if, whether it's career, personal life, and anything in between, uh, that, it's, um, that it puts you in your sweet spot. And so going through that process, I think, um, you know, certainly in my experience was, um, you know, a, you know, a, a difficult day and a half, um, a difficult day in the sense that it was so emotionally charged. And, um, you know, uh, I mean, you know, it's just one of those days, and, and I think we've all had them when you, you know, when you just feel like emotionally spent, I mean, it's, it's eight o'clock at night, and you're just like, I am, I am done. Like, I can't talk anymore. My I'm toast. Um, that's the way going through that process in that workshop, um, you know, under the tutelage of Nick Craig and his team at the time, you know, that, that was, you know, the process that I went through. And, you know, I think that uh, there are certainly more ways to skin the cat. I think that there, you know, there are books out there that will give you exercises that you can go through that require reflection. And you may be a fast reader, but it might take you a little bit more time to um, actually like write down your true thoughts, whether just right in front of you on a book. Um, or there's also, um, you know, a series of, of workshops or career seminars that might take you six months. 
Um, so I think it's really up to the individual and, and what you feel is right for you. Um, but I encourage you to go deep. I encourage you to extract those crucible moments, um, analyze them, I, and, and, and bring, evoke that, those earliest childhood memories that put you in a place of, of you know, the kind of that, that ultimate uh, kind of serotonin based, you know, um, you know, uh, limbic system place where it's just, it's, it's sheer euphoria and, you know, build off that and, and, and see where it takes you. Give yourself some time. I, I have a comment just uh, about the word purpose. I'd like to put an S on the end of purpose. I'd like to make it plural because uh, I think it's quite possible and, and probably all of his experiences, we have multiple purposes and those purposes can be complementary and they can conflict with each other. And one of the challenges that we have at any point in our life is being able to manage uh, the multiple purposes. So what do I really mean by that? You know, one could uh, be being the very best family person you can. That, that, that's a very important purpose. And at the same time, being the very breadwinner or businessman that you can. And at the same time, uh, supporting charitable organizations. Now, there, there's an overall structure that, that can allow all that to happen, but I think uh, we sort of uh, box ourselves in if we think about just a single purpose to our life at, at any point in time. We can have multiple endeavors, multiple purposes that, as I, as I mentioned, I, I think both complement as well as conflict. Uh, with each other. So I just, I just wanted to broaden the, the, that's, the term. That's a really good point, Corey. And I, and I, and I tend to agree with you. I think that we can, and we should have multiple purposes. Uh, and I think the ones that you define are, are, are very clear and genuine and, and, you know, sh surely for, for value, value a society make a whole lot of sense. Um, you know, the, the, I think the, the exercise and the endeavor that I went through, um, you know, I, I would just challenge to say went a little bit deeper and really forced you to be so much more focused and clear with your intent um, that at the end of the day, by doing so, really gave you the opportunity to um, always go back. It's, it's, it's your anchor, your rudder, right? So it's, it's always there and it's something that you can always bounce off of and understand like, am I, am I living my, my purpose? Um, even if it includes multiple purposes. And I, I didn't read it at the time, but I'll, I'll just go back at his example to Tara Rush, um, you know, who, who was able to take, I think, what were multiple purposes she had in her mind and still put it into that purpose statement, which was to be the contagious energy that transforms a melody, melody into symphony, a game into a carnival, and a flame into a fire. Now, honestly, I don't know what she's talking about, um, but she does. And that's what's really most important is that within that context, she's created a framework for herself that is actually not dual, but tri-purposed. Um, and so I think that might bridge um, what you're saying, Corky, to, to still um, give everyone an opportunity to have a personalized and intimate connection um, to a, not a purpose, but a purpose statement um, that really helps them to define where they've been and where they want to go through the rest of their lives. I, I really enjoyed what you were talking about, especially embracing the future with humanity. And then you focused on what you do and who you do it with. And sometimes I think the challenge might be the who you do it with part, because no man is an island. And I don't think you can really actualize large visions in life without the support of other people. And sometimes finding that level of support, not finding the naysayers who keep telling you you can't do that, becomes a real challenge. Even in the time of coronavirus, finding people who are like-minded and want to address social issues that are current right now, and people are tired, people, and I understand and appreciate that, but sometimes the challenge of identifying good team players who have the energy and the excitement and enthusiasm to live that purpose, a shared purpose with you, can become a big challenge. That makes a lot of sense. You know, I, um, I can't agree with you more in the sense that, that that streamlined position, that streamlined statement gives you the confidence you need to cut through the red tape, to cut through the BS, and to move beyond the hurdles and the humans sometime 
that don't permit you, don't allow you or afford you the opportunity to, to live your best life, to live your best self. And that sometimes is a really, really challenging thing to do, particularly if it's a loved one, particularly if it's someone that's been in your life for a very long time. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, that person has their own life journey and, you know, or, or that company might have its own life cycle. And that pur purpose statement that you create for your internal self is what should give you the confidence and understanding of, of, of when to lean in and when to let go. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to jump in. I think for me, my life purpose statement is kind of my soul connection to me and to the world. And it's like the undercurrent of everything else. And I keep coming back to it to measure, you know, where am I in my work in connection to my life purpose? Um, and I have a question, and that is what I loved about these different people that you shared with us and your um, own writing. I'm curious whether you wrote your life purpose statement first and then kind of wrote a more descriptive piece about it. It felt like everybody had their purpose and then there was also kind of a descriptive piece. You know, I, I, I would say that, that um, I don't think, honestly, it was, it was one of the first workshops where you, you know, you were hit with a lot of pre-work. Uh, there, there were literally, you know, pages and pages of, of information that, you know, needed to come with it that, um, you know, that really had you thinking and reflecting before you even walked in. Um, so we knew where this is headed, where it was headed, but, but again, never have I had such an intense yet fulfilling and, you know, and, um, and rewarding workshop experience than what I had in those near two days at West Point. Um, and, you know, it, despite the, you know, the, or in addition to the, the, you know, three examples of the seven or eight people that I talked with, um, you know, I think it's also to understand that the experience that we went through had such a dramatic impact on people in the organization that they left their jobs that day. Mm -hmm. wow. They left Heineken USA. Wow. They, they realized through this experience that they weren't where they were supposed to be. And the execs at Heineken at the time, I mean, they discussed that in advance. They're like, wait a minute, what are we doing here? We, we're running the risk of losing people. And they ultimately decided, no, it's for the good of the organization, it's better to, to have everyone focused on the same mission and the same purpose um, in defining their own. And it's more important for those people to live their purposes than it would be um, you know, for them to just continue to follow one that, that they're not believing in. And so you know, a couple examples. I, one gentleman who was our head of sales, um, he realized that the corporate side of the business was not where he needed to be, and he moved to what is now the largest uh, beer distributor in the country, um, Republic National, out in uh, sorry Breakthrough Beverage, out in Los Angeles, Las Vegas. And another woman left that day. She put in a resignation, and she uh, and she applied for medical school. She was in HR, you know, and she was an HR specialist. And she enjoyed fulfilling, you know, that role and, 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 and supporting others in the organization. But she ultimately said, you know what, I'm kidding myself. This is not what I really want to be doing. So she went through that process. And, and over a course of two days, it literally turned her life around. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm, I have to leave. I've got a Zoom happy hour at five. I'm sorry. But oh, I that sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but I just wanted to say I was at MetLife and I brought Richard Leiter in to do an all-day workshop on purpose. And one of the staff people resigned and started his own business and uh, decided to work in Mali in Africa to help in microfinancing and marketing and he's really happy and it was a big life decision and he said it was because of the workshop so i think yours is just fantastic i would love to have you do a more in-depth workshop it would be great and thank you so much thank you well thank you thank all of you yes you know thank you um, so much Ryan. i have to i have to jump as well it was it was great i saw it on linkedin i'm glad i got a chance to to peek in thank, thank you all you. so much thanks ryan cheers thank you. So what I want to say is a um, couple things. Um, we, you will be receiving a, an e. You watch for another email from 
It'll be under my future purpose. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a summary of what Ryan talked about. Fantastic. In addition, wait, what happened? Oh, right, I'm okay. Just, I'm, just um, I'm just talking. I'm just going to keep talking as long as people are listening. <laughs> yes. I mean, let me know when you're not listening anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, uh, in addition to the summary, we're going to provide you with three links to articles that Ryan referenced so that you can click on them and you can begin working on the start of your own personal purpose. Great. In addition, a coming attraction to be announced, we will be holding a nine to noon workshop to help to delve more um, deeply into helping you come up with that statement. And we just have to set a date to be able to make that happen. Um, and we will, in, we will send it all out to you and, and you can join us, we'll do it I don't know if we're going to do it on a Wednesday or a Friday. Our conference is, or anyway, we're working on the date. So stay tuned for that. Um, so um, I don't, oh, and I want to make a reference to several things. We have a friend um, who is also one of our speakers. He's in Japan. His name is Hiro Murata. And Hiro, Hiro said to me, because he was going to come on May 15th, and we sent an email to him saying, oh, God, you know, Hero, we, we changed this. I know you made flight reservations and stuff, and it's going to be October 2nd. To which he said, I will come, but I want to present. Hero, what do you want to present on? Icky guy. He said, we've been dealing with purpose in the Japanese culture for, for, for he centuries. And he said, I want to be able to walk people through finding their ikigai, their reason for being. So these are two books that I, and I'll put this in that email um, that I, or e-blast, it will be a follow-up. And you'll probably get it, you won't get it tomorrow, you'll probably get it Friday. But I'll put these books in there. And then Ryan had a um, slide, and it is a slide on his presentation. And it's this book, um, Find Your True North. And in it, uh, this was the exercise, all the stuff that, you know, they kind of, how they formed their, I'll put this in there if you want to order this workbook. Um, and Ryan, I have one more question from you. How much did it cost Heineken to have these guys? Oh, yeah, was, I think they did it for free, Vicki. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, it was part of a greater, uh, you know, again, kind of organizational mission building uh, project that, that these guys did. And it went from the, you know, the, the, the corporate execs all the way down to first level leaders. Um, and then um, every new employee that was brought into Heineken USA uh, was uh, given the purpose building workshop through employees that were so touched and moved by the experience they had gone through that they actually became purpose statement building mm -hmm. workshop trainers. Um, so it would be hard to put a price tag on all of that, um, but you, you can certainly bet that it was a pretty penny. <laughs> okay, great. Well, I don't have anything more. I certainly thank you all for joining us tonight, today. Um, and I can't thank Ryan enough. Um, as I said, I've known him since he was 10 years old. And um, his dad and his mom gave both Steve and I 10% ownership of him. <laughs> that has paid more dividends than I can ever, ever, that has ever been in any of my portfolios. So I am very grateful for uh, having him be a part of this. And you'll be hearing more from us.